Welcome back guys, my name is Austin from awfulmedia.com and this is part 3 of the inventory system in Unity 3D. In this part we're going to actually start the inventory part and that sounds odd considering this is part 3 of an inventory series, it's now starting inventory. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a new script file and this is going to be a C -sharp script as always and it's going to be called inventory. Okay, so this is going to handle everything for the inventory uh, to have this active in the game world I want to create an empty and I want to create or call this excuse me call this inventory and I'm just going to drop that on there and I want to open up inventory and we're going to get started now we're going to start out very simple and then work our way to the thing you saw in the first part we need access to the system.collections.generic once again so I'm going to do that as we've done this already because we're going to be using a list for our inventory. It's going to be a public list so we can check it out in the inspector, but it doesn't have to be public uh, for the actual game. I don't believe so. If we, we don't need access to it, I don't think. I don't think so. So it's going to be a public, it's going to be a list, obviously, of item, just like before, and call it inventory. Inventory items? No, just inventory would be fine. And then do the whole new list thing like we did before. We have to create an instance of this class, and it's a list of item. Now what we have access to uh, to be able to do is I can say inventory.add, then I can add items to the inventory. And that sounds quite simple, because it really is kind of that simple to start out with. Later on, we'll create a method to handle all this, uh, parsing it uh, based or, or uh, doing it based on the ID of the item that we passed it. But for now, we'll keep it quite simple. One thing we need access to is the item database, though, so we can actually see what items are available to us and then pass it the uh, index or the ID of the item and then get the item back that way. So I can do that. I'm going to set up. Hmm, how I'm going to do, let's just do this with a public, again, doesn't need to be public, we'll do a private, and it'll be a item database, as that is the type we're looking for, it's going to be just called database. Okay, so now in start, we're going to search for the item database, but normally it's best to do this uh, clearly in start, so it happens uh, to be very beginning of the game, but also based on tag, so it narrows your search down quite a bit. And the way I can do that is to go to item database. I want to go to a tag up here in the top right corner and go to add tag. I'm going to then add the item database tag. So this is going to tag this item with item database. And then I can search for all items with the item database tag being only one. And it has my search down quite a bit. So I can do at the beginning. We have to go and get the component as we've done before. Again, kind of basic uh, Unity stuff. So if you don't know that stuff, may not be the best time to learn that in this series, but I do have a whole series covering all that stuff, so please go check it out. Then we'll set the database, which as you can see is item database type, so we have to get the component of item database, so keep that in mind. Database is equal to, it's going to be a game object, go through the game object class, and we gives us access to the find game object with tag. So looking for one object that has a tag, and we pass it a string value, okay? The string value is item database, the, the name of the string that we gave the item database object. But after that, I have to do get component because we're looking for the component of item database, which is on the item database object. Okay, so just to show you that really quickly here, I have item database, and item database, the script, is a component on item database, the object. So that's a component. I grab that component from our reference to the item database object that we got by going through the tag item database. And now what we can do with this is something quite cool, really. It's, it's pretty early on, but this is still pretty cool. What I can do is now go through item database, which is now database, to the items, and then I can pick out specific items in this list. So I only have one, which is at the zero point. But then I can go through that and grab the item. Look at all this. I have access to everything now. It's all public, and it's a list of items, so it grabs all of the values that our item class has. 
So I can grab the item name, which we know is, uh, what was it? Uh, bronze sword, bronze sword. So I can do that right there. So I can print this out. If I was to go back over here, I could say print. Okay. Just like that. And what this should do is print database.item0. Now this is just like an array. I'm grabbing the from the items list at index of zero. Okay, so when I add another item, it'll be zero, then it go to one, then two, then three. It goes all the way, right? But it starts at zero. So the first item in our database, as I can show you here, is bronze sword, and it starts out at an index of zero. It has nothing to do with the ID yet, but uh, the index is in fact zero. So if I added one here that was a uh, rotten apple, and it says a rotten apple, and it doesn't do any of that, but it's a consumable for whatever reason, I would then have another item in my inventory that I could print out. So I can just copy the print here, do that. But this item is sitting at index in our database of one. Okay, so now if I go back in here and I click play, and go to my console and go to my go to my console there we go it prints out bronze sword rotten apple as that that's the names of the items that I grabbed from the database so what does this do for us how does that help me with the inventory well what we can do now which is kind of the basis for an inventory starting out really the whole time the basis for the inventory is this right here so i can go through my inventory list which is inventory and i can add and you can see the item is looking for is of type item which is great because i happen to have a database full of items so i can go database zero no i can't do that sorry i was getting a little too happy <laughs> items uh, database dot items zero so database.items0. So I'm going through the database again, just like I did the printing thing, except leaving off the item name because we need the actual object, the actual item itself, and not any particular uh, value that we have within the item class. So now inventory should in fact contain that. And to uh, make sure it does, what I'm going to do to start with is inventory.count, right? I can do a count. So I can print this out. And what this will do is it'll print inventory.count, which would equal nothing to start with because there's nothing in it. It'll just count all the items in the inventory. And then I could do a print and I could say inventory.count again. But after this, it should increment by one, okay? So go back into Unity. I'll click play. And I should say zero, one because we added one in between those two counts. So that means it's working. The other thing I could do is I could say inventory. As inventory is a list, I can say inventory zero dot item name. Notice I have the same access here because inventory is a list of items. I'll click play and it'll say bronze sword. So now our inventory, if I was to go to inventory here, go to inventory, size is one, it contains a bronze sword. Okay, that's cool, but what else? I can copy this and add a rotten apple just by changing the index to the index of rotten apple which is the second in the list which is one click play now inventory is two contains bronze sword and rotten apple so that's pretty great but one thing i want to do in this part and then wrap this part up is i want to display this in game in at runtime not just in the inspector not just in the console but actually in the game screen and the way i can do that is uh, quickly through on gui okay so we're gonna go through on gui which is the unity gui method that you use for drawing gui elements in screen space and one thing i can do is we've not went over loops in this yet but we're going to start now so the first thing I want to do is set up a for loop. Like I said before, be sure to understand this before you come along. I will explain it very briefly as to not bore everybody else. A for loop needs three things. It needs an initialized variable, it needs a condition, and then it needs an increment. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm say int i is equal to zero. I'm initializing i, setting it to zero. 
I can be whatever you want. I is typical because it is index, so I. The next thing it needs is a condition. Some say I is less than something. So if I say I is less than five, that means this will run five times as long as I goes up plus plus, which is plus one each time. Okay, so what this will do is it'll run first time I is zero, it'll do whatever's in here. Next time it comes back through, it'll do this until it's done, by the way. So it won't it won't return out of this and continue on. It will just keep doing this until this condition is met. So I is zero. Next time it goes up one, so I is one. And it does this until I is no longer less than five. When that becomes true, it leaves the loop and continues on its way. But we don't care about five. What we care about is how many items are in our inventory. But why is that? So if I do inventory dot count, that'll tell me how many items my player currently has. We know it's two. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of these prints. We don't need these. We know it's two because we added two items right here, zero and one. Our inventory now contains two items. So this will loop through twice. Why do I care about that though? Well, this is significant because I don't want what well, all I want to do is draw a label on screen for each item in the inventory. And this does something for each item in the inventory now because I'm counting each item. So what I would do is say GUI.label, which is going through the GUI class, finding the GUI or finding the label method, and it requires a, a couple of parameters. The first one being a rectangle. Rect, however, is a class I want to create a new instance of rect. And we'll give it four values, uh, an X starting position and a Y starting position and then a width and a height. OK, so the X starting would be 10 for me, I guess. The Y starting for now would be 10. And then I would give it a width and a height. So I don't care about the width and height as it is just text. So 200 and well, not 200, but 250. I'd be good. And then it needs a string or well, this at least this version needs a string. You can also pass it an image, you know, just uh, cycle through those to see what the available uh, uh, parameters are. But we're going to be using the string one, which is good because we have inventory uh, dot item name. So the cool thing about this is since I'm cycling through the amount of inventory items, is that each time it goes through, I goes up one. So now I is a reference to the index of our loop, which is good because we can use I and reference an upper, a specific index of our inventory. Ah, so what does that mean? So inventory we have here, I can pass it I. So the first time it goes through, it'll be zero, which is good because we have an item at zero. Next time it goes through, it'll be one, which is good because it's an item at one. So it'll find item zero, we can do something with it, find item one, we can do something with it, and then it'll stop because there's no more items left, at least not for now. So it's a string value, which I have with item name. Okay. What's interesting about this though is we 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 also have to use the index to offset our position, and I'll show you why when I hit Control S there, and then I'll come in here and I click Play. What we'll see is we see the labels there, but they're stacked on top of each other because they both share the same position, 10, 10, 250. They both share that. But we have information here that shows us how many items that we're rendering, which is I, because it goes up each time. So we can modify our position based on our current index, our current I. So I can say I times whatever spacing we want. So I'll do 20 to start with. That should be kind of close. There we go. So I have bronze sword. It goes down 20. It says rotten apple. I just want to modify that spacing. I could do 40. It'll double the spacing for me there and push rotten apple on down. So that's how it, that can work for us. So the cool thing about this is, I'll go back to 20 here. I can copy this and paste it a few times. And it'll add at start, not uh, at runtime only happens at start because it's in the start method it'll add all these items they're, they're the same items repeating but I'm adding the items to the inventory and for each one it is repeating keeping the spacing consistent so that is the basis for a an inventory and that's that's all there is to it 
to get to this point. I wanted to go to the most simplistic inventory possible to start with to, you know, to teach the fundamentals of what an inventory is. But now we're going to take this and turn it into the inventory that we're all used to in modern day RPGs with the grid layout, especially on computer RPGs, on PC RPGs, where you drag the items and you can, you know, drag them around and stuff. And that's, that's, uh, that's where the fun comes in. I can guarantee that we're going to have a blast. So that's it for this part. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know below. It really helps a lot. If you interact with the video, if you leave it a like, if you leave it a comment, and if you subscribe for these videos, I will be sure to pump these out much more, uh, much more quickly. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Awful Media. Follow me on Google Plus, Awful Media. Subscribe. Check out the site. Got a question? Leave a comment or go to the forum on awfulmedia.com. Stick around for part three, four, part four, where we, uh, who knows, start the grid, I guess. My name is Austin, and I'll see you next time.